Hi, this is Matt Piper, Propeller Head Product Specialist for Line 6. And this is our sixth and final video in our How to Record a Song series. Now this video is about mixing. And you can spend a week or two or three mixing a song. Uh, you think you're done and then you listen to it on another system, you hear something you hadn't noticed before and you come back and make another change. In fact, knowing when to stop and call it done can actually be a trick to be learned. And even for a, a rough mix or a quick mix, you could still spend an hour or an afternoon. Um, you probably don't want to watch a video quite that long. So instead of showing you the entire mixing process, I'm going to show you a few things that I did during this mix. Um, and hopefully that'll help give you a feel for what it's like to mix in Reason 6. And also give you a few pointers that you can apply to your own mixes. As you can see, I've done a lot of copying and pasting of parts since the last video. Now I'm just going to set some basic levels. I want to hear the vocal more clearly, so I'm going to turn some other tracks down a bit. At this stage, if there's something in the mix that you're having trouble hearing, instead of turning the quiet thing up louder, it's generally better to turn other stuff down and leave some headroom in the mix. Otherwise, if you keep turning things up, you'll overload your outputs. Now I'm going to work on the drums a little bit. So I'll just loop a short section and take a look at redrum. Solo that. I think I want a punchier kick with a sharper attack and maybe a little less sub bass energy. I can always layer another kick later if I need to add back some of that bass. So I'm going with an acoustic kick drum. Now I'm going to create a new channel in the mixer, and I'm going to route the kick drum to that channel. Now that I've got a dedicated channel for the kick drum, I can easily add effects to the kick drum. I'm going to tweak the sound of this kick with a great new device they added in Reason 6, the Pulverizer. And really all I'm going to do is add a little distortion to this kick to warm it up a little. I'll let you hear it without pulverizer, and with pulverizer again. I think the kick is more clear and present in the mix now. Just a matter of taste. Now I want to work on the hi-hats. I want to tighten them up at the beginning of the song. So I've just turned down the amp envelope decay setting on Dr. Octorex. Now I'm going to automate that decay setting so that the hi-hats will be tight at the beginning of the song and then open up later when the dynamics of the song also go up. So I'm drawing in a clip. And I just drew in a higher decay value there. Let's hear it again and watch the decay slider. Now I'm going to focus on the guitar and bass. Part of mixing is making room for each track in a mix. So I'm going to use the low pass filter to roll off some high frequencies from the bass that would otherwise overlap with frequencies that really should be in the guitar tracks territory. Okay, now let's hear the guitar. For the guitar, I'm going to do the reverse and use the high pass filter to roll off some lows that would otherwise infringe on the bass tracks territory. The high pass and low pass filters are great, but if I need even finer EQ adjustments, I have a really splendid and advanced EQ section here. Another way to make space for a sound in a mix is with side chain compression. Basically, I'm going to make it so the kick drum affects the volume of the bass guitar, so that every time the kick drum hits, the volume of the bass track is momentarily reduced. So I'm turning on the compressor on the bass guitar track. And since I connected an output from the kick channel to the compressor's side chain input, you can see that it's being controlled by the kick drum. 
Those yellow lights show the amount of gain reduction, or volume reduction. Hear the little volume drop where the kick drum would be? Turn the compressor off for a second. Back on. If I turn down the release, then the volume drop will be super brief. When the track is playing, you can't hear the hole in the bass, because the kick drum fills the hole. Now I'll work on the vocals. What if every I'm going to use the compressor to smooth day. out the vocal, so there are no distracting jumps in volume level. What if every chance was a second chance when you thought it was all? I'll use the high pass what filter. If every day was a new day. To filter what out any unnecessary low frequencies. Was a second chance when you thought it was. I'll add some plate reverb. What if every day was a new day? And some delay. What if every chance was a second chance when you thought That delay sounds pretty weird. So let's try something else. What if every chance was a second chance when you thought it That's more was like it. I'm going to change the delay time to eighth notes. What if every day was a new day? I want this vocal to be swimming in delay, so I'm going to add another delay here. This one has a nice stereo effect. Let's hear what that delay sounds like. What if every chance was a second chance when you thought it was all over? It's all over. And turn the other delay back on and hear it with the track. What if every day was a new day? Cool. All right, now let's jump to the chorus section of the song. I'm just dragging this synth pad channel to the left so I don't get confused because I'm going to pan it left in the stereo image. Oh, yeah. And I'll pan this to the right, this little whoosh noise I added while you weren't looking. And add delays to the pad and the whoosh. And turn the whoosh down a little. Perfect. Now I'm going to do some simple mastering. This is the finished mix prior to mastering. First I'm going to turn on the master bus compressor and turn up the threshold setting so that it will be a lighter effect. I want less than four decibels of gain reduction here. And you don't have to use the master bus compressor, it's optional. Now let's go to the master section. The maximizer is used to keep your track from overloading the outputs, while also making the track seem louder. All you have to do is breathe. Even though the track seems louder, it's not overloading. There's also a mastering EQ. I'm going to turn up the lows just a little bit. And turn up the highs just a little bit. Now I'll let you hear the mastering setup I actually ended up going with for this song. Don't worry if you don't know what you're doing with this mastering thing yet. There are lots of presets that you can try and see how they sound for you. Alright, that's it. 
If you've been sticking with us for all six of these How to Record a Song videos, I thank you very much for that. I hope it's been helpful. And if you've got questions or comments, please post them. I do my best to respond to them. Thanks.